Hey guys, welcome to the channel. My name is Aaron. I'm a junior doctor working in London and graduated from Cambridge University two years ago. I've decided to make this series of videos to try and help anyone applying to medicine or dentistry with their application. And I'm going to give you my advice on different steps of the application process. So a little bit about me. Uh, I've helped hundreds of students over the last 10 years or so get into medical school with things like personal statement, helping make uni choices, the UCAT BMAT exams and medical school interviews. I was the lead UCAT BMAT tutor at Kaplan Test Prep for five years and helped write some of their materials. And I used to run a business helping students get through their medical school interviews. But now what I've decided to do is try and put all of my advice, all of my experience over the last few years or so onto YouTube so it's free for you guys and hopefully you find it useful. So let's get straight into it. So in this video, we're gonna talk about the personal statement part of the process. No one really teaches us how to write a good personal statement and what needs to be included. And what we we'll actually see is the more time and effort that you put into your personal statement now, the much easier the application process becomes, especially for the med school interview, which is that last final step, which is probably the most important part of getting an offer for a med school. And that's something I wish that I knew when I was starting out. So let's jump straight into it. This is going to be the structure of the video. Firstly, we're going to talk about the technical details of the personal statement. So things like word count, how long it can be, and when it's due in for. Secondly, we're going to talk about the two main reasons why the personal statement is so important to the application process. Next, I'll be showing you how all the 37 different UK medical schools use the personal statement as part of their entry requirements based on their websites. And you'll see that some medical schools actually say they don't use a personal statement at all until the actual interview stage. So feel free to jump straight into this part if you want to check out how your particular unis use the personal statement. And finally, I'll be going through my personal statement from top to bottom. We'll be talking about the structure, the PEE style of writing that I really recommend, how to incorporate things like work experience and volunteering, and making sure that you mention key buzzwords. These are basically things that really stand out to a particular interviewer. Everything is going to be timestamped below in the description, so feel free to jump to any particular part that interests you. But for now, let's jump straight into it and start with the technical details of the personal statement. So let's start with deadlines. UCAS, which is a university and college admissions service, handles all the university applications for the UK. And the deadline for that is usually around the second week of October. So this year, the deadline for the application is the 15th of October 2020. And that's the deadline if you're applying to medicine, veterinary medicine, dentistry, and also if you're applying to absolutely any course in either Oxford or Cambridge. Most schools or colleges, though, will want to see at least a first draft of the personal statement around the end of July before you break up for the summer holidays. So just bear that in mind. In terms of the length of the personal statement, UCAS form allows the personal statement to be up to 4,000 characters in length, or up to 47 lines of text, whichever comes first. And that includes blank lines between each of the paragraphs. In terms of the length, I wouldn't worry too much about it until you've finished your first draft, and then you can start thinking in the back of your mind how long it needs to be and how much you might need to cut out. Now on to the two main reasons why your personal statement is so important. Number one, your personal statement wants to make you come across as someone who will be committed to medicine. And one way your personal statement can show this is by highlighting both the good aspects of medicine that you've realised, as well as also some of the challenging aspects. So lots of people put in the good aspects, highlights from their work experience, their volunteering, maybe interesting books or lectures they've read about medicine or science. But it's a challenging aspect of the job, so something like the long hours of the job or the emotional strains that it can have on you. And as you'll see later in the video, I think if you drop those in the concluding paragraph, it works really well. Number two, the personal statement forms a massive part of your interview. So everything in your personal statement, you need to know inside out with definitions, examples, and lessons that you might have learned. Okay, now on to how your university uses a personal statement. Every university is a little bit different, and I've tried to summarize this for you. So there are 37 different medical schools in the UK, and as you can see over here, from their websites, I've kind of summarised this. So, for example, some unis, like Nottingham, really place a high emphasis on the personal statement at the pre-screening stage before your interview. Then there are other universities, such as Barts and Imperial, who mainly use the personal statement at the interview stage. And then some unis, like Brighton and Sussex, say they don't use the personal statement at all in the application process. So hopefully that's useful if you haven't yet decided where you want to apply to. 
Okay, so now let's have a look at my personal statement. So this was the final version of my personal statement that I used a few years ago that luckily got me all four offers to study medicine. But just remember, this is the end product, and that's after weeks and weeks of little tweaks and changes after lots of help from friends, family, medical students, and lots of teachers. Let's have a look at the first part of the personal statement from an interviewer's perspective. Okay, so this is the introduction that he's got over here. My approach would always be a student of medicine, keeping abreast of the latest developments. Okay, brilliant. I might ask him about a recent article that he may have read up on, on my desire to help others. So let's see exactly, is there a backstory to that about why he wanted to start and study medicine? Okay, here I can see he's moved on to his work experience. Okay. Observing the primary care team. Okay, he's mentioned that there are here. He's also mentioned secondary care. Okay, brilliant. So I can ask about those two and whether he understands the NHS hierarchy, importance of teamwork. Let's see if he's demonstrated some of those skills elsewhere. Angiograms and echocardiograms. Uh, highlights the need for sensitivity and empathy. Okay, those are really two characteristics I want to see if he really understands. Okay, this is interesting. Weighing up the most appropriate consultation approach. Okay, so let's see what he's kind of learned about consultation styles from his work experience. Okay, brilliant. So as you can see there, that's from an interviewer's perspective. And everything I've highlighted is what I like to call buzzwords. Kind of like really interesting things that an interviewer might pick up on when flicking through your personal statement. And as you can see, it mainly kind of covers two things. Qualities of a good doctor, things like empathy, sensitivity, leadership, teamwork, multidisciplinary team. And then kind of interesting things like echocardiogram, Alzheimer's, angiograms, interesting diseases. So make sure you've got a few of those buzzwords scattered throughout your personal statement. Okay, so now let's focus on the structure of the personal statement. And this is the basic structure that I always recommend. Start off with your introduction, where you kind of put in a couple of reasons why you really want to study medicine or dentistry, then move on to your work experience. And I think it's really, really good to start with primary care things like GP, then moving on to secondary care like in a hospital, and then mention anything kind of interesting or a bit different. So some people like to do work experience in a pharmacy uh, or in a lab, kind of trying to see different parts of medicine, such as the medication side of things or the research side of things. Then on to volunteering, so things like uh, working in a nursing home or volunteering at a nursery and I think it's really nice to kind of categorize these two together because they complement each other quite nicely with the different age groups. Then on to kind of academic things um, so I particularly put this paragraph in because I was told that Cambridge like it um, but to be honest after reading lots of different personal statements I think it's quite nice to see that for any medical school so they want to know that you enjoy your subjects and you've done well. Then move on to what you do in your spare time, so kind of your hobbies, extracurricular activities. And then finally, the conclusion, where I think it's nice to mention one of the challenges that you're aware of in medicine. That's the basic structure for your personal statement that I recommend. What I really want to emphasize now is the PEE approach, point evidence explanation. I think we've all probably heard of this kind of from school in terms of helping our writing. I think it's really important to understand how we put this into our personal statement and also how it ties in with our interviews. So the way I look at it is, in your personal statement, you want to mention the point and the evidence. And in the explanation bit, you can go into much more detail face-to-face -face in an interview. For example, in your personal statement, you could mention something like, during my work experience at the Royal Free Hospital in the ophthalmology department, I was able to witness the importance of teamwork skills in delivering efficient services as part of a multidisciplinary team. So in this particular example, the point would be teamwork, and the evidence would be what you saw in your work experience. And the explanation bit would be coming in your interview. So why is teamwork useful to medicine? And also, how have you developed your teamwork skills? So for example, in your interview, you could build on this by saying, in particular, I saw a patient in the eye department with orbital cellulitis, which is a big eye infection. And I saw lots of input from the ophthalmologists, so the eye doctors, as well as the ENT team, the ear, nose and throat team, because this infection had actually started from one of the sinuses. But it wasn't actually only the doctors that were vital, they also worked closely with the ophthalmic nurses, the technicians, as well as the pharmacists in really giving optimal care. That's a bit about how it's useful to medicine and how you've seen that. Now talk about how you develop teamwork skills. So for example, you could say, I'm part of a dance group and we choreo together and we put all ideas together to try and deliver a really good final formation, final routine. 
and that's helped me develop my teamwork skills. So there you go. In your personal statement, you've mentioned the point and the evidence, and then you can go much more in detail about the explanation in your interview. And also, as you can see in this example, we've managed to drop in one of those buzzwords, multidisciplinary team. Okay, so hopefully that now covers most of the theory about what goes into a good personal statement. Now let's see how all of this comes together. Okay, so if we start from the top, um, my approach as a doctor would be to regard myself as always a student of medicine, constantly learning and keeping abreast of the latest developments. So here I'm hoping they actually ask me about something I've read about recently that I could have prepared right before my interview. Let's move on. I'm attracted to the profession and practice of medicine by my desire to help others. So hopefully they're going to ask me about why I decided to study medicine. I could mention that and expand on that more. I cannot imagine any greater satisfaction than using my knowledge and skills to relieve others of their distress and suffering. Once again, kind of building on that point. And that's your introduction. So I've dropped two reasons there as to why I really wanted to go for medicine and I can bring them up in more detail in my interview. Now let's move on to the next paragraph. My determination to study medicine has been fueled by my experiences in different aspects of medical care. So just kind of a nice intro into saying now I'm going to talk about my work experience. Two weeks in an urban general practice, observing the primary care team at close quarters, made me acutely aware of the activities of primary care and overall healthcare provision and emphasised the importance of teamwork for delivering efficient services. So I've introduced with GP practice, I think it's really good to start kind of with primary care things. And then I've said I'm aware of the activities of primary care, so I need to really be aware of what primary care's role is in the overall NHS. And then I've mentioned teamwork, so I've got my point in evidence, and in my interview I can go and talk about the explanation. Moving on to kind of hospitals, so secondary care now. Additionally, placements in Princess Alexandra and King George Hospital allowed me to observe good practice in a number of departments in a secondary care setting. This included cardiology, where the importance of diagnostic procedures such as angiograms and echocardiograms became apparent. So for me, I really need to understand exactly what angiograms and echocardiograms were used for and maybe have an example of a patient that had one of those tests. My time in the hospital's pre-operative clinic highlighted the need for sensitivity and empathy, so two really important qualities of doctor that I've dropped in there. When acting as a doctor, I observed them weighing up the most appropriate consultation approaches to use with individual patients. So I've deliberately been told by lots of friends to put in consultation approaches, and the reason I did is now I realise why. In medical school, there's a big, big emphasis on communication and how we talk to patients. And that's why I deliberately put that in there, because I want to mention patient-centred and holistic approach in the interview if they ask me about that. Okay, let's move on. So I've covered my kind of GP and hospitals. Now I've covered something a bit more interesting, which was my time in India volunteering in a hospital. Wanting to gain an insight into medical provision in less developed countries, I spent two periods in Indian hospitals, once shadowing an endocrinologist, and a cardiologist and on a separate occasion volunteering at home for mentally and physically challenged children. This work was immensely gratifying and I felt privileged to use my abilities and knowledge to help those less fortunate. The visits enabled me to contribute to public care in different environments and to be aware of the marked differences in healthcare provision between the UK and India. Okay so over here I've talked about my time in India and I'm hoping they ask me about the healthcare system in India and how it's different between the UK and India. I think it's really good to have comparisons. Medical school interviews, interviewers love kind of comparing things. Um, they do it throughout medical school as well. So being aware of that is quite useful to drop in in your personal statement. Okay, let's move on now really onto the kind of volunteering side of things. As a St. John Ambulance volunteer, I'm continually developing my knowledge of first aid and emergency care, as well as improving my ability to make decisions and react promptly and effectively. Okay, I can talk about my time at St John's. While completing the Duke of Edinburgh Silver Award Scheme, I began working at a nursing home for the elderly, and I continued to work there on a voluntary basis. Yeah, I didn't do gold GV, it wasn't for me. Um, so there I can talk about um, kind of my time volunteering with elderly patients, elderly res residents. I've said I chat with residents and assist with the feeding of those who suffer from dementia as well as dysphagia, dropping in kind of dementia and dysphagia, um, things that you need to be aware of if you mention them. And then in contrast, once again a comparison, my ongoing voluntary work with mentally challenged children at St John's Special School provides me with a different perspective on palliative support and the varying approaches suited to different age groups. 
So once again, I'm trying to show them a comparison that through my work experience, through my volunteering, I've noticed that you need to talk differently to kids as to elderly patients. Really, really simple things that seem really obvious, but by just name dropping them, mentioning them, it builds up a platform for you to really express yourself in your interview. Okay, so we've done work experience, GP, um, hospital, interesting stuff, and now onto volunteering. So now onto kind of the academic paragraph that I mentioned before. I've completed a number of courses and projects related to medicine, just a little introduction to that paragraph. I attended a meddling course and completed a pathology project on Alzheimer's disease, learning about its genetic causes and becoming aware of the need for more research funding. So I've name dropped Alzheimer's, I've name dropped genetic causes, and I also put in the word research. I think that's really, really useful. A lot of people don't know the importance of research in medicine when they're starting out uh, for work experience, completely understandable, but it's quite useful to be aware and show that you're aware of the importance of research in medicine. I completed an extended project qualification on the suitability of stem cells and the treatment of ischemia, something kind of like you do as a mini AS level, um, and hopefully they ask you about that if you've dropped it in. I presented papers at seminars for the Biology Bucks and Society at school, and this has developed my presentation and critical thinking skills. Once again, putting in skills that I hope will be useful to being a future doctor. I am participating in the Chemistry Olympiad and Captain Maths Challenge team. I thoroughly enjoyed my AS subjects and achieved full UMS marks in 11 out of 14 modules with a cumulative score of 1395 out of 1400. Something my school made me put in because they were super proud of it. A bit over the top, I think. Okay, now on to kind of the hobbies and extracurricular paragraph. Most of you will have loads to put in and have to cut things out, but I think try to put in the really, really cool things or things that you're really kind of passionate about and then also things that you think you can link to hopefully how it's helped you become a future good doctor. As an individual who can effectively balance study and leisure time, I enjoy table tennis and karate. I've represented my school at a national televised speaking competition. Sounds pretty cool, hopefully they'll ask me about that. I play Eastern violin, for which I achieved grade eight and diploma at distinction level. I find it relaxing, perform regularly in charity concerts organized by MIOT, that's just the Medical Institute of Tamils, because I'm Tamil. And I also share my talents by giving group lessons to younger students. Really, really important thing there, someone told me to put that in. Put in about teaching. If you do any little teaching, really important. Medicine is all about teaching. Consultants are teaching juniors. Professors are teaching other consultants. Juniors are sometimes teaching consultants. So really important. If you have any little bit of teaching, try put it in there. Finally, the concluding paragraph. I'm aware that a career as a doctor has its challenges, such as the long hours. But despite this, I believe I have the enthusiasm and energy to excel in medicine. So I put in something that I'm aware is a little bit difficult about medicine. Whatever you just put it in, something small that you're aware of. It shows that you know that being a doctor isn't amazing, isn't super every single day. I believe that my past achievements show me to be a responsible, reliable team player who conducts himself with compassion and respect for others. I aim to take advantage of every opportunity offered to me when studying medicine. The end. Okay, so that's me going through my personal statement with you guys right from the top to the bottom. Hopefully you kind of see why I deliberately put some of those things in and um, how this kind of is the prep for your interview, which is that last step really important to getting that offer that we all really, really want. So that brings us to the end of this video. I hope you found some of that useful for your personal statement. If we just summarise, we started talking about the technical details of the personal statement. Uh, then we talked about the two main reasons why the personal statement is so important. Number one, to show your commitment to medicine. Number two, to really help you for your interview. Then we talked about how the different UK med schools can use your personal statement and what they say on their websites. And number four, we went through my personal statement from the interviewer's perspective and then right from the top to the bottom, talking about the structure of it, how to drop in buzzwords, how to work with the PEE, the point evidence explanation kind of style of writing and how that ties in with your interview. So hopefully you can apply some of that to writing your personal statement. These are just some of the things that seem to work for me. I hope you really liked the video. Thank you so much for watching. If you did like the video, please leave a thumbs up and comment below. And if you have any questions, comment below and I'll try to get back to all of you. If you want any particular advice, feel free to message me on Twitter and Instagram. So thanks for watching. Please subscribe to the channel. All the best guys with your personal statement, go and smash it and I will see you in the next video.